there, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Get Curried. And you're watching Nick Saraf's Food Log. I'm going to take you on a culinary journey across the world, and we're going to start with the most important meal of the day, the breakfast. The first breakfast that I'm going to show you is the most famous breakfast in the whole world. That is the British breakfast. That the British people are known for not exactly, you know, having a cuisine. I mean, fish and chips, steak and ale pie. <laughs> it's bar snacks is what it is. I should be the one to talk. I loved it when I lived there. But the British breakfast is the most famous breakfast and the most hearty breakfast in the whole world. This breakfast consists of bacon, sausages, mushrooms, eggs, toast, butter, baked beans, hash browns, and many, many more things depending on where you go in Britain. And of course, in the end, everyone's favorite, heart medication. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make baked beans. Now generally when people cook baked beans around the world, they take it from a can. But since I'm not a hobo, I'm going to be making mine from scratch. The perfect British baked beans are made from navy beans. But since in India you don't get navy beans, we're going to use kidney beans. Now, for making the perfect baked beans, you need to soak these hard kidney beans in water for 8 hours and just let them be so that they soften up. Now I've already done that so these beans have come out nice and soft. So now we make the tomato sauce in which we bake the beans in the oven. For that we take a medium saucepan and put it on a medium to low flame. And then some oil. When the oil is nice and warm, that's when you add ginger and garlic paste and then you add finely chopped onions. And now we cook the onions till they become translucent. You add in three cups of tomato puree. Now what I do when I use tomato puree is, I use store-bought puree because fresh tomato puree is not going to give you the desired results for this particular sauce. And wait for it to boil. Now these baked beans have a very small cheat code and that is ketchup. Now most of the world hates this, but a little bit of ketchup to the baked beans really gives it a good flavor. So I'm going to add about one teaspoon or more of ketchup. Well, actually I added about two tablespoons, I'm sorry. I really like it. A tablespoon of malt vinegar. A teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Say it with me once again, Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That's right. In it goes, a tablespoon and a half of honey, chili flakes to your discretion, aromatic chopped thyme, and salt and pepper. Make sure there's a light boiling. Now, off the flame. We pour this hot sauce over the soaked beans in a heat-proof glass casserole dish. Tomato is acidic, so you don't want the acids to react with the metal and give it this metally texture and flavor in the oven. So, you know, glass is always the safest bet. There you go. So I'm gonna put them in an oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. The next thing we're going to do is make hash browns. Now when most people make hash browns, they generally buy frozen hash browns and fry them up and serve them for breakfast. But since I'm not most people, I'm going to be making mine from scratch. For this, I need potatoes, and I've immersed them in water so that they don't oxidize and turn black. Grate these using the bigger part of the grater so that we have thin strips. We'll then enjoy the cooling sounds of baked potato. One potato, two potato, three potato, dad. Four potato, five potato, six potato, dad. Seven potato, eight potato, nine potato, dad. So once you grate them, put the grated potatoes back into the water. So after you're done, you drain all the water out and spread the potatoes on a dry, clean dishcloth. And make sure you absorb all the moisture, cover them up, and leave them aside for about two minutes. Take a big glass bowl and break in two eggs for four potatoes. And whisk the eggs until completely combined. Add the salt and crushed black pepper and mix it well with the eggs. Take the potatoes and put the dry potatoes in the egg, salt and pepper mixture. 
and then be prepared to wash a mean, dirty, wet dishcloth. Make sure the potatoes and the eggs have combined thoroughly in the bowl. If the mixture seems too liquidy, add like a tablespoon of flour or some more potato. And if it seems too dry, add half an egg or maybe a whole egg. But right now, it seems neither, so, well, I am perfect anyway. <laughs> Such a a class. <laughs> so the reason why hash browns have their name is because hash has come from the French verb haché, which means to chop. So chopped potatoes mixed with eggs, fried up hash browns. And now we fry up the potatoes. So again, medium flame, frying pan, and a whole lot of oil. Dye cholesterol, dye. Take a spoonful of mixture with your spatula, flatten it, and try and form a shape. Now what I've gone for is slightly squarish, but traditionally they do triangles. So I could go for a triangle if I wanted to, but I'm not, because I'm going for a square. <laughs> Deal with it. Now many people wonder why some of the menus have bubble and squeak listed as one of the many ingredients of a complete British breakfast. Now the thing is, I'm going to put this on a low flame so that I can get to talk. <laughs> Love the sound of my voice. Bubble and squeak is actually when you have leftover vegetables from the night before mixed with potatoes and fried off like hash browns. And why the name bubble and squeak? Because it is just so cute. So when they're done, make sure that you lay them out on some absorbent paper so that the excess oil is absorbed. The next thing we do is we make the mushrooms. Medium flame, pan, little bit of oil. Because mushrooms are best cooked in one of the greatest inventions of nature, butter. So we add butter to the oil and let it melt. I'm going to add some fresh thyme that I've chopped finely. Now we add the mushrooms. Mushrooms are going to take a long time to cook because they're fungus. <laughs> With mushrooms, you're going to need a good amount of salt and some crushed black pepper, of course, to give it that good peppery kick. So when the mushrooms have shrunk slightly in their size, they're cooked. In the end, what I like to do is just deglaze the pan a little bit with about a teaspoon or so of vinegar so that the mushrooms get a nice juice going to it and mushrooms cooked stewing in their own juice is just heavenly. So now that we're done with the mushrooms, we're going to move on to bacon and sausages. This is my favorite part of the whole breakfast. Basically, medium flame, pan, a whole lot of goodness of oil, and then we add the sausages. You can always substitute the pork sausages for chicken sausages and maybe just bake them in the oven instead of frying them in the pan. But then again, if you wish to try and have the option, then try a British breakfast. Now what I would have really liked to use here are British recipe sausages, traditional British recipe pork sausages. But of course, you can't get them very easily in India. So I just am um, using pork frankfurters. I somehow feel the queen judging me. What we're going to cook next is called the food of the gods. Bacon, 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 bacon. I can keep on saying it, but I'm going to cook it now. Also to the people who ask the question, why does British bacon look like this instead of American rasher? This is what bacon looks like. This is bacon. This, what you can chew, is bacon. 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 
Back. Back. Bacon. So when the bacon is nice and pink on both sides, when it seems to have shrunk, that's when the bacon's done. So what we do next is we grill a tomato. This is probably the most mysterious part of the breakfast. Why? Because people have asked for eons. Why is there a grilled tomato on a full English breakfast plate? Well, the answer for that we don't know because this is the healthiest thing on the English breakfast plate and that's definitely a mistake someone made ages ago but let's go with it anyway so to grill the tomato first take the eye of the tomato out then we cut it in half and then on a pan with the same oil from the sausages and the bacon on a medium flame we grill it So now we make the last thing for the British breakfast and that is the eggs. Add some oil, drizzle it around and then we break the eggs directly on the pan for a nice sunny side up. Now the flame should be medium to low. You don't want the eggs to dry out completely. And here we go, omelette on the plate. And of course, no British breakfast is complete without a drink, hot or cold. And in the case of most of the British people, it's a nice hot cup of tea. Mmm, it's quite good, I must say. So there you have it, a full English breakfast at your fingertips. And for your information, the British breakfast will kick the American breakfast in the behind. That's right, I said it, in the behind. So until we meet again, with a breakfast from a different country. Stay tuned to Nick Seraf's food log only on Get Curried.